we're really doing it. We're really doing it. San Jose, that's right, my hometown. Mm -hmm. That's right. We got more than the sharks. We got a little Mexican girl. Let's see, what alumni do we have here tonight? Lincoln High, any Lincoln High? Woo yeah, I went there. How about uh, Gunderson High? Any Gunderson High? All right, I went there too. <laughs> How about uh, Liberty Independent Studies? No, just me and my mom. My dad's here tonight. Give it up for my dad. He's in the house. My daddy -o. My dad's so cool. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my dad. My dad is like Mr. Cool Guy, like life of the party, you know what I mean? Like super athletic, like really into sports. Like my dad's the kind of guy who watches a boxing match on TV as if he is in the boxing match on TV. You know what I mean? Like he'll watch it like this. It's like, whoa, dad, are you winning? He got us involved in sports when we were younger but not like the legit way. <laughs> Only if it was free to sign up and you got a free t-shirt to play. Because <laughs> if you had to pay for a uniform, forget it, you can't be on that team. <laughs> for instance, I ran track and field growing up, but I wasn't on a track team. Dad would just take me to the track meets on Saturday morning and sign me up. I was the only one with my number on binder paper. <laughs> it would look like this. Lane one, Lincoln High School, blue and gold. Lane two, Gunderson High School, brown and gold. Lane three, Angela. And some jeans, a t-shirt, and a pair of flip-flops. I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't trained properly. Everybody else is lined up in their professional, like, I'm a runner, this is how you start position. Except for me, because I was up there like this. Everybody on the side is telling me, like, get down. Get down in the position. I'm like, why? Why am I going to get down? I got to get back up to start running. I wasn't trained properly. Sure enough, the race starts, the gun goes off, everybody takes off running, except for me. I'm hiding. I thought it was a drive-by. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I was really into wrestling growing up. WWF. Right? Before it was WWE. You know what I mean? Like some old school wrestling, like some Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, Ultimate Warrior, Ryder Roddy Piper, Million Dollar Man, Tugball, Earthquake, Demolition Bush, Waka. I was seven years old into wrestling, right? You know when a kid does something good in school, you give him like a toy or a prize or something, right? Well, I'm seven. I got good grades one time. And my dad surprised me with tickets to go see WWF at the arena. 
It was the best day in all the seven years I had lived up to that point. <laughs> it was so cool. Me and my sister and my dad went to the arena. My mom painted our faces like Legion of Doom. <laughs> We walked into that arena like we were Legion of Doom. <laughs> like they're gonna tag team us in accidentally. <laughs> you know, the wrestlers come out, right? And they run to the ring and everybody's trying to get a high five from the wrestler. Well, I'm the littlest one trying to get a high five, talking about, I saw Jim Duggan! I saw Jim Duggan! Right here! But he didn't see me. <laughs> then a wrestler came out that I didn't like, so I yelled at him. I said, you suck. <laughs> Which is fine, but not when you're seven. You can't say suck. That's a cuss word. <laughs> right? Like, like, that's like when you're a kid, there's some songs on the radio that you're not allowed to sing that song. Right? Like when I was young, I used to sing this song. Oh, me so hungry. Oh, oh, me so hungry. <laughs> me hungry long time. just some things you can't say when you're seven. <laughs> and I'm a little brother. He's starting to get into that, like, MMA fighting, right? See, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a fan of my brother doing that, <laughs> right? And he's like Mr. Macho Guy, like muscles, tattoos everywhere. Like, all he does is train to fight, work out at the gym, and take pictures of himself for Facebook. <laughs> right, like Mr. Macho Guy. But really, if you knew my brother, he is the most sensitive guy you will ever meet. He is, like, he's the first to cry at an Allstate commercial. <laughs> He cannot take constructive criticism. And he still sleeps with a teddy bear. Yeah. And not even like a little one that you could hide somewhere. Like a full on, I won this at the county fair. And now I'm gonna sleep with it. And he's had it for years since he was a kid, right? So it's filthy. You know what I mean? Like, it's disgusting. And one day my mom washed it. She put it in the washing machine. And my brother came home and he's like, Mom, where's my bear? <laughs> Where is my bear? <laughs> I washed it. Machine? <laughs> well, does he still have his nose? Ah, uh, no, I think your bear tapped out. Sorry. <laughs> You're an adult. Stop sleeping with bears. <laughs> and move out. got a lot of good childhood memories growing up, but now I'm moving on to that next phase in my life. I just got married recently. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I know, I didn't mean to blind y'all, sorry. I know it's real sparkly. <laughs> Don't be 
fooled by the rocks that I got. <laughs> I'm still Angie from the block. <laughs> started telling people that I got married like a lot of people were surprised they were like what oh my god I didn't even know. I thought you were a lesbian <laughs> surprise <laughs> ponytails cause I'm lazy not a lesbian <laughs> but thank you for coming One time this girl tried to hit on me, right? And it started becoming like a regular thing. So I asked her, I was like, uh, let me ask you a question. What is it about me that makes you think that I'm a lesbian? And her honest to God answer was, well, in your YouTube video, you say that you like your nails short, you don't have a boyfriend, and I noticed that you always wear your hair in a ponytail. <laughs> So I guess that's all it takes to make the team. <laughs> Just that and drive a Subaru. <laughs> you wanna be in our team, you gotta roll in the Outback. <laughs> or a Vespa. <laughs> or as I like to call them, Lespas. <laughs> Everything about my wedding day was perfect, except for the fact that I got sick. I know, it was my own fault too. Cause uh, what had happened was... Uh, I took too many supplements that day. And by supplements, I mean, I take this multi-pack vitamin. It's like six different vitamins. I was on antibiotics from the week before because I was fighting something. And then I got congested, so I took a decongestant pill. But then I got a headache, so I took like three Advil. <laughs> and like, you can't put that much poison in your body and your body not try to get rid of it, right? <laughs> You see, I wasn't thinking about that on my wedding day. I was just all excited. I started feeling a little sick, so I took the whole aisle three at the pharmacy. <laughs> and we decided to take pictures before the actual ceremony, so I'm there, like, posing for my pictures. And then all of a sudden, it just hit me, like... to use restroom. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Never mind. False alarm. <laughs> but you know how it comes and goes. <laughs> like, your body will give you that natural first warning. <laughs> and it's up to you if you want to be obedient or not. Like, you're supposed to get the warning and be like, ooh, better start making my way over. <laughs> like, that's what it's for. <laughs> but see, I tried to man up, right? I was like, no, 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 I got this. Go, go, take the picture, take the picture. Start posing for my picture again. And then I don't know if anybody here ever seen that movie Bridesmaids. <laughs> You know that part where she go boo-boo in her dress? <laughs> well, I'm standing there posing for my picture, and all of a sudden it hit me again. I was like, ooh, that's not a warning! 
and I had to recollect all my track and field training. I had to run back to my hotel room. My photographer had to help me jump out of my dress real fast. Like, that's not in their job description. By the time I walked down the aisle, everybody just thought I was nervous because my face is pale. I'm walking down the aisle like this. <laughs> Do you take this man to be your husband? Yes, I do. <laughs> do you? Really? What? Yes, I do. He does. We all do. We all do. <laughs> you don't need me for the rest of this, do you? <laughs> I'll be in the back. <laughs> all in all, it was a beautiful day. You know, we had a great time. Friends, family, it was a lot of fun. Just uh, take a couple of modium and you're all good. <laughs> but if you take modium, be careful because you're good for like three days. <laughs> You'd be like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, that's too real. I thought we were a family. <laughs> we went on our honeymoon in St. Lucia. And uh, I had never even heard of St. Lucia before I booked the trip. It just sounded real fancy. I was like, ooh, St. Lucia. Book it. <laughs> like, I thought it was going to be these luxurious white sandy beaches and like beautiful clear water and we landed it was actually kind of a little third worldy <laughs> felt more like a missions trip <laughs> thought we were gonna build a well before we left <laughs> nice <laughs> and people ask me like who's your husband who is this guy tell us about him right well it's actually kind of funny because I used to do a joke on my first DVD where I talked about Christian rap music and Christian rappers I like it's so cheesy like what you gonna do bust a cap in the devil like what <laughs> right like what's your name Ludacris? Coming to the stage, Jay Zesus. <laughs> right? That's so cheesy. <laughs> so, of course, the person who I'd end up marrying is a Christian rapper. <laughs> yeah, joke's on me. Oh, you're funny, Jesus. <laughs> when we first started dating, I was kind of embarrassed to tell my friends and my family because, like, I knew I had the joke. I knew they knew I had the joke. So I was just trying to avoid it. Like, my cousin Joe, he's like, who is this guy? What does he do? I was like, oh, um, he's in a band. <laughs> cool, what does he play? Uh, play, 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 play. Um, I don't really know if he's athletic or not. <laughs> no, instrument. Oh, instrument. You said play, that can mean like 20 things. <laughs> um, he plays the lyricist. <laughs> yeah, it's new. You probably never heard of that one. 
People say my husband looks like Lenny Kravitz. Yeah, I'll take it. Right? Well, white people will say he looks like Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Black people say he looks like Maxwell. So. It just depends on what neighborhood you're from. Any black guy with an afro, he look like him, probably. <laughs> but funny thing is, he's not even black, he's Puerto Rican. Oh, got some Puerto Ricans in San Jose? Shoot, since when? <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> that was a long trek. People who are not Latinos sometimes think that all Latinos are the same, right? But we're very different. And uh, you don't realize how different Mexicans are from Puerto Ricans until you sign up to marry one. <laughs> very different. Very different. Even the little things, right? Like, I'm Mexican. I like spicy food, okay? I eat salsa with everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't got salsa for your food, probably don't even eat it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just get a smoothie. <laughs> Serious, like, you go to your friend's house for dinner, you're like, oh, I ain't got no salsa, I'll be back, I'm gonna go jump juice real quick. <laughs> and my husband, he's Puerto Rican, and he can't do spicy food. Like, if you sprinkle a little bit of pepper in his food, He's gonna flip out. Babe, is this spicy? You put spice in this? You put your Mexican stuff in this? <laughs> like it's pepper, you can't handle pepper. My family calls me Mija. His family calls me Mommy. <laughs> Little differences. The Spanish is so different. The way Mexicans speak Spanish, the way Puerto Ricans speak Spanish, is very different, right? And like, I live in LA now, so that's like Northern Mexico. So that's the only kind of Spanish that I hear, right? And then Puerto Ricans, y'all are from Florida, I think. <laughs> so when I first flew to Florida to meet his mom, she started speaking to me in Spanish. And I was like, oh, sorry, I don't speak Puerto Rican. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, it just sounds different. Like, to me, when I hear Puerto Ricans speak Spanish, it sounds like they have water in their mouth. <laughs> and they don't want it to spill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hola, como esta? Que acabo de comer. It just sounds different. I mean, I'm not really one to be talking because I don't even speak Spanish, so. My last name is Johnson. What do you want me to do? My husband and I decided we didn't want any kids, right? We're like, no, no kids. I know it's very un-Mexican of me. 
And I take it over the top, too. Like, if I see a pregnant girl walking towards me, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, I don't want her pregnant vibes to jump on me. <laughs> if one sneaks past me and I missed her, I catch her at the last second, I'll hold my breath like, <gasps> Thank you. We got enough nieces, nephews, cousins, god kids. I got a lot of god kids. I don't know if it's a Mexican thing to double up on your god kids. I got a lot. I got god dogs. I got two god dogs. One's Maltese Poodle, one's Maltese Shih Tzu. I have uh, two goddaughters. They're half Italian, half Filipino. I have a godson. He's half Puerto Rican, half Filipino. So basically, if you want to be one of my god kids, you got to be either Maltese or Filipino. Yeah. That's how you make my team. Where are Filipinos at? Filipinos? Filipino. Oh. Thank you for coming. I think I gravitate towards Filipinos because we're very similar. Mexicans, Filipinos are very similar. You know what I mean? Like, we have big families. Y'all have big families. We live at the same house. Y'all live at the same house. <laughs> Very similar. One of my good friends, she's Filipino, right? And uh, one day her grandma was driving and she probably shouldn't have been, but she was. And uh, you may think you know where I'm going with a joke, but you don't, so just wait for it. So her little Filipino grandma, she's driving and all of a sudden, she hit a dog. I know, it was really sad. But her response to that was, Ay, sorry, dog. <laughs> Ay, sorry, dog. she apologized <laughs> and now I just use that in everyday life <laughs> like if I trip over something I'm like oh sorry dog <laughs> oy, oy, oy. <laughs> I feel like all my Filipino friends are real jumpy like, they get scared real easily. Like my friend Penny, she's Filipino. She gets scared of everything. You don't have to do anything scary. Just walk around the corner unannounced. I don't know the book of small. You scare me, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, hey. Filipinos go through like 10 different scared facial expressions. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One time I was at the mall at like Orange Julius or something. And there's a little Filipino lady working the register, right? And she went to hand me my receipt, but it dropped. So she goes, Ay, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Just a receipt, I got it. <laughs> yeah, so we don't want no kids.
<laughs> and my husband and I, we're still real new, right? Like, we just got married last summer. We had just moved in together. So we're still, like, figuring each other out, right? Like, our little things we do, our little rules we have, right? Like, like for instance, like, my toothbrush, right? I like to be the only one that uses my toothbrush. <laughs> this guy, I don't know how he grew up. <laughs> like maybe they're on a budget or something. But like he comes to me the other day, he's like, hey babe, can I use a toothbrush real quick? I said, what? Like, that's the option for you? <laughs> like you're thinking about it? Sick. <laughs> he's like, what? It's just like kissing, we kiss at the same thing. Mm, I do not scrape off your tartar with my tongue. I mean, I know I'm pretty amazing. But I'm almost positive I cannot prevent cavities. My husband likes to leave his shoes right in the middle of a walkway. Like as soon as you open the door, boom, shoes. Now you couldn't kick them off to the side. That was hard to do. So all throughout the house, I just trip over shoes like, ay, study dunk. And we're still real new, so like, I still try to look cute when I sleep. <laughs> I'll probably grow out of that one real quick. <laughs> but right now, I still try to look cute, right? But it's kind of hard because I sleep with Invisalign trays in my mouth. <laughs> so sometimes when I wake up, my lip will get stuck to the plastic tray. <laughs> I wake up looking like Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> like full on, let me show you Shantan. <laughs> My face will be all greasy. That's not cute. So when I feel myself starting to wake up, like I'll fix my lip real quick. I put grease on my lip like it's glass. <laughs> Make it work. Make it work. And we're pretty good with decision making, right? Like he'll come to me with stuff. I'll come to him with stuff, like teamwork, you know? But uh, every now and then he'll try to go off and do his own thing. Like uh, recently, we just bought some curtains for the house. And I told him, I said, when you're at the store, take a picture of them and send it to me before you buy it, right? But he forgot that part. <laughs> so I came home to these gaudy Armenian curtains hanging in my house that are like two feet too short. I got high water curtains. <laughs> The first thing my brother came over the house, he's like, uh, why you got capri pan curtains? <laughs> my husband and I travel a lot for work. He travels with music, I travel with jokes. And sometimes we'll go to like some small town, like nobody has ever heard of this town. Like these people haven't even heard of their own town. 
And when you fly to a small town, you have to fly on a small plane. And uh, I went to a town recently where the plane I was on, I don't even think it had an engine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was a paper plane. <laughs> like it just had two propellers out front. Like as you step onto the plane, you had to take turns spinning the propeller. <laughs> Like, is the price is right? I checked my seat assignment. It says shotgun. <laughs> they had one flight attendant. She was wearing regular clothes and a name tag. Like, real suspicious. And I fly a lot, so I'm used to the way things work on an airplane, right? I'm used to the announcements they make, like, <laughs> flight attendants, prepare for landing. I'm used to hearing that kind of stuff, right? But on this plane, we got a different announcement. It sounded more like, <laughs> Stephanie, we're coming in. <laughs> Stephanie. Was this a family on plane? <laughs> Stephanie, if you have any more of that potato salad you made for the church picnic last week, <laughs> can you bring it on up to the cockpit? Thank you. <laughs> potato salad. <laughs> I don't feel safe. The thing that sucks about flying on a small plane is there's always going to be turbulence, no matter what. Like if a bird is flying next to you, and he sneezes, you gon' dip. We landed at the smallest airport I've ever seen. They only had two doors, enter and exit. So you're not gonna get lost at this airport. You're not gonna be like, oh no, what terminal am I in? Oh, the only one. <laughs> but every now and then they send us to some real cool places. Like uh, recently they sent me to Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, woohoo, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go tell some jokes right here. <laughs> right here. Right here. <laughs> I actually have a lot of family in Hawaii, but I'm Mexican, so I have family everywhere. <laughs> Except for Arizona. cousins in Hawaii, he tried to teach me how to surf, right? But see, surfing and I do not go hand in hand because when I get in the ocean, I only go up to about right here. <laughs> so if we could catch a wave in this level, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> right? Because this is how I'm thinking. Like, God forbid I need to be rescued for some reason. I want it to be as simple as one, two, gotcha. <laughs> right? Like, that's it. This is as deep as I go right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll dunk, like, real quick, like, <laughs> know there was multiple kinds of surfing like my cousin he does kite surfing regular surfing all kind of surfing I have come to realize there are two kind of people in Hawaii the kind that surf and Japanese people <laughs> I don't know if you ever been 
but I got off the plane a little confused. I sure did. I was like, Mr. Pilot, <laughs> I think we better round everybody up, went a little too far. <laughs> and these are the kind of Japanese people with money, right? Like they wear all the name designer brands all at the same time. I saw this one girl wearing some Gucci sandals, a Prada shirt, a Louis Vuitton bag, and like an Ed Hardy blinged out hat. <laughs> All the name designers don't none of a match. <laughs> really? How'd this girl get dressed in the morning? She must have walked in her closet, closed her eyes, and was like, what a rare today. <laughs> Or it's probably like, ta-ra! <laughs> After Hawaii, we went to an island called Guam. And uh, yeah, all right, tomorrow in the building, hey! I see you. I love that island, it was beautiful. I had a great time on that island. My only complaint is I got bit by a fish. Didn't even know that was possible. Cause see, I was in the ocean, right? Right here. And my sister was like, hey, look at that little fish. I took one step towards it. Where? Dish! <laughs> it latched onto my foot and I was like, ah! I took a bit by a fish. I took a bit by a fish. <laughs> and my sister's like, ha ha, no you didn't. At this point, no words have been coming out of my mouth now. It's just sounds like, <laughs> and she's just laughing, but then the whole left side of my face started swelling up. Not really, but in my mind. <laughs> In my mind, bad things were happening. <laughs> when I'm not traveling around telling jokes, I do live in Los Angeles doing some acting stuff. Uh, thank you. Uh, if any of you have kids, you might have seen the movie Alvin and the Chipmunks, the squeakquel. Yes. Uh, for those of you that have not seen the movie, I'm actually in that one. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> I don't just give random chipmunk shout outs. I'm really popular with three year olds. <laughs> They're kind of a demographic. <laughs> Wish they could buy tickets to my shows. <laughs> I met the most adorable fan recently. She was four years old at the mall with her mom. And uh, she was really brave. She walked right up to me and she goes, I saw you in a chipmunks. I said, you did? And she goes, do you see me sitting on my bed? <laughs> yeah, it was the cutest thing I had ever heard. But I didn't know how to respond to that. 
I was like, oh, shoot, what do I do? Tell her the truth and crush her dreams? So I was looking to her mom like, uh, what do I do? Tell her the truth or tell her a lie? What do I say? And her mom's like, well, did you? <laughs> Anybody here see the movie Our Family Wedding? Uh, for those of you that did not see the movie, I'm in that one too. Yeah, oh, okay, I'll tell you the preview, okay? And then you'll think about it, you'll go, oh yeah, I remember seeing that preview. I just didn't take it a step further. <laughs> Our family wedding is basically the story of the Mexican family and the black family marry into each other and all the crazy things that happen when the two cultures collide. We had a really great cast. We had America Ferreira I play her sister. Carlos Mencia played our dad. Uh, we have Forrest Whitaker, Regina King, Lance Gross, Lupe Antrevedas, the woman that killed Selena in the movie Selena. <laughs> yeah, she played my grandma. I didn't know how I felt about it at first either. I had to remind myself, it's just acting. <laughs> she didn't really do it. <laughs> Don't look her in the eye. <laughs> Don't turn your back. <laughs> She's actually a really nice lady. But uh, I had them with my trailer away from her, just in case. <laughs> We had a half Latino cast and a half black cast, right? We did what's called a press junket. They set up one day where all these different TV shows come and they interview you to promote the movie that you're in, right? So they're like, okay, Latino cast, you guys can do all the Spanish interviews. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> My last name is Johnson. Might as well put me in the black interview. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we'll just do it like this. We'll have the interviewer ask the question in Spanish to the camera, then he'll ask it in English to you. We'll just cut that part out, put like a Spanish voice over you. That was their solution, to do interviews all day like a kung fu movie. <laughs> Every now and then they would give me something in Spanish to say to the camera like, Hola, soy Angela Johnson y les invito a ver a our family wedding. <laughs> and like, I would sound good, right? Like I knew what I was talking about. So at one point, this interview guy was like, you could do the interview in Spanish. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can say that because you just told me how to say it, but I'm not going to understand you, so this will go nowhere. <laughs> Let's just try. Let's just try. I've been trying since I was 12. <laughs> the first question he asked me, this is what it sounded like to me. Uh, Carlos Mencia, uh, our family wedding. And this is my response to him. <laughs> okay, let's do English. Let's do English. Yeah, boy, English. That's what I said. I'm only on level two of my 
Rosetta Stone. <laughs> Despacio. <laughs> but I felt bad after. I was like, okay, sir, fine. Let's just find a happy medium, all right? How about... I will do the interview in broken English. That way people think that I speak Spanish. <laughs> right? Let's, let's just do that. What, what's the next question? What was it like working with America forever? Okay. All right. Here. Okay. <clears throat> When I find it now, <laughs> that I'm gonna work in with <laughs> America Ferreira, <laughs> I am yes. so excited. <laughs> I love him, Betty La Feia, Ioli Betty, all the berries. <laughs> and when they call in me, this is a good story. You're gonna like this one. <laughs> Mira, I don't tell this one to everybody usually, but I like you. <laughs> mira, mira, mira. Ferreira I say oh my god oh my god are you kidding me you're not kidding me ay 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 I can't believe in the pink in me I don't think they like that one very much. <laughs> Pretty sure it got cut out. <laughs> we uh, filmed the movie in Los Angeles and then they flew us out to New York for the world premiere. And that was real nice, real fancy pants. They put us up in this like swanky hotel suite. And I wrote Ghetto Fabulous. I brought my brothers with me, my cousins, you know what I'm saying? And like, hey, they putting us up, y'all. But get your own flight. They kept us out there for about a week, and the day we we're flying back to LA, a huge storm hit New York, and we checked out of the swanky hotel suite. I'm at the airport, I have my boarding pass in my hand. They're like, sorry guys, we're not gonna be able to take off. This storm is really bad. As a matter of fact, every single flight out of New York is canceled. You're gonna have to get a hotel and stay the night. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Because I already checked out of the swanky hotel suite. And now I'm on my own budget. <laughs> and when I'm on my own budget, I live life a little differently. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go back to that swanky hotel suite. I went to La Quinta Inn in Queens. <laughs> Keep it real. Hold it down, remember where you came from. I have no shame. I have my brother with me, and not my muscle MMA brother, but my other brother that does my hair. <laughs> and he real cute. <laughs> but don't get it twisted, he'll still fight. 
He just fights a little differently. <laughs> like my MMA brother, if he's gonna fight you, you know you're about to fight because he's gonna come at you straight on like, yeah, we're about to do this, boom, 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 and like take you down, right? And then like my other brother that does my hair, if he's gonna fight you, he's gonna come at you like out of nowhere, just like, ha! <laughs> cock it all the way back. <laughs> Just out of nowhere, like, pop! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and when I was in New York, I met this guy that I'm pretty sure hates women. Or he's just mad at us right now. Cause like, he came up to me out of the blue and was like, uh, yeah, 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 no offense, but I don't think female comedians are funny. I was like, oh, ha <laughs> ha, I was like, oh, um, okay. That's cool. You do you, homie. got mad that I didn't get mad because then he went on to say yeah because like even when I'm playing video games I don't pick none of the girl characters because they just not as good <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not even talking about stand-up comedy anymore <laughs> and like I'm not a big gamer you know, like, I don't own any of the consoles. Like, I had the old original Nintendo back in the day. Right? When all you needed was up, down, left, right, A, B, star, select. You know what I'm saying? Like, I learned how to duck hunt. And I would cheat, too. Walk right up to the screen, like, boom. 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 Well, who gonna stop me? <laughs> if that little dog would laugh at me, I'd shoot him too. Boom. <laughs> I was running track on that little mat thing that came with it. Remember that little mat? <laughs> Doing hurdles. That's where I got my training. <laughs> if something was broke, all you had to do to fix it was blow on it. Ladies, you ever wake up in the morning and uh, you do your hair and your makeup and then you look in the mirror and you're like, hmm, that's not what I meant to do. You know what I mean? Like your hair came out wrong. You did your makeup all weird for some reason. And like, since when do I wear pink eyeshadow and glitter at 10 a.m.? You try to fix it by putting more and more makeup on your face, so by the end you just look like a drag queen. <laughs> or one of the girls that works at MAC Makeup. to work so you can't take it all off and start over. You're like, oh well, I guess I'm going to work as Lady Gaga today. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, I was born this way. <laughs> you get to work, you're like, hey guys, hi, how's it going? 
I was just practicing <laughs> my nighttime look <laughs> in the daytime <laughs> so I could see it better. <laughs> I don't even know how I learned how to do my own makeup because my mom trained me to be a chola. <laughs> she did. Because, ladies, you know how when you're first allowed to wear makeup, your mom will give you, like, your first lipstick or your first blush? My mom gave me a brown lip liner and some chapstick. <laughs> and one can of Aquanet. <laughs> that is a chola starter kit. <laughs> And this is how you know if you're talking to a chola or not. Like, if you're not quite sure, like, she kind of has the sharpie eyebrows. <laughs> but you're in Los Gatos, so that doesn't make no sense. <laughs> like, if you're talking to a girl and she sounds like this, like, Psh, you don't even know. <laughs> You don't even know. Like, no matter what you're talking about, hey, is it cold outside? Psh, you don't even know. It's like the more uneducated you sound, the more chola you are. That's why there's always some chola on the radio trying to get you to go back to community college. Yeah, what's up? Are you like me and dropped out of high school and got your GED? <laughs> Welcome to San Jose City Community Junior Evergreen College. <laughs> where we have nighttime classes and weekend classes if you don't got no babysitter. <laughs> All you gotta do is call 1-800-123-456-7819. Right? Because nobody educated talks like that. You don't go to your doctor and your doctor's like, yeah, I think it's like a rash maybe. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> You know how you had stomachache? You thought was like real bad cramps? Girl, it is not what you think. <laughs> Pero it's a boy. <laughs> this next story I want to share with you guys. I like to refer to as dinner with a random thug in South Central. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with South Central, South Central is a place that you drive through, not drive to. <laughs> maybe if it's the daytime and you're wearing neutral colors, then maybe. <laughs> But at 10 o'clock at night, by yourself, with a banana clip in your hair, probably not a good idea. <laughs> My favorite taco spot is right in the middle of South Central. And one night, I was driving home, and I was like, you know what? I want a taco. I know it's late, and it's dark, but I'm a grown adult, and I want a taco. <laughs> so I start driving to this taco spot, well aware that this could be my last meal. <laughs> but these tacos are good. <laughs> and this isn't your normal walk up to the window, order your food kind of place. All of the windows are bulletproof. <laughs> you have to push a button to buzz the door open to get inside. You order your food through a glass window, they put it on a tray and push it out to you. It's like you're in prison, but you don't know if you're the guard or the prisoner. <laughs> so I'm walking up, right? 
I see this one mean looking thug sitting out front like he looked mean. He had a scar from here to here. He was wearing a wife beater, some sweats, and some house shoes. <laughs> you know those corduroy house shoes? <laughs> this fool had his house shoes on in the outside the house. <laughs> So I'm walking up, right? I see this guy. He looks at me, then he looks at my car, and then back to me, and then back to my car. I'm like, oh no, he's gonna rob me. <laughs> Jesus, I just wanted a taco. <laughs> so I get all scared, right? I'm like, oh shoot. What do I do? What do I do? I can't just stop, run back to my car and leave. That's racist. <laughs> so I'm like, shoot, just act tough, right? Just act tough. So I put my shoulders back. I'm like, yeah, what's up, homie? <laughs> put a little stank face on it. He goes, ah. What's up, blue shirt? <laughs> hey, you think you hook it up with a chicken taco right quick? Oh, he just wants a taco, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll get you a taco. That's no problem. That is no problem. So I push the button, buzz the door open to get inside. This dude comes walking in right behind me, like breathing down my neck. I said, oh, he tricked me, oh, he tricked me. He said he just want taco, he gonna rob us. That's my bad. That's my bad. He's like, hey, could y'all put some sour cream on it? himself a nice little table at the restaurant I walk up to the window and I'm like okay look I don't know this fool but he asked me to give him a taco so I'm gonna give him a taco cuz I'm scared <laughs> but if I give you the sign Call the cops. <laughs> uh, let me get a chicken taco with sour cream, and I will have a chicken taco with sour cream. <laughs> funny we're ordering the same thing <laughs> hey it's funny we're ordering the same thing <laughs> me and you we like the same thing we don't even know it besties besties <laughs> me and you at this point i forget that i don't even know this guy but it's like we're homies now i'm like yeah i'm gonna get a horchata hey you want some drink homie you want some drink you trying to get that orange Fanta? <laughs> you trying to get that orange Fanta? <laughs> yeah, that's the homie. He gonna get the orange Fanta. <laughs> so I get our food. I go and I sit down with a guy. I don't know how it happened, but all of a sudden we are on our first date. <laughs> I'm serious, you guys. He's asking all the right questions. Ask me about my dreams and goals in life. 
He's giving me advice. I'm telling him about Jesus. <laughs> but at the end of the conversation, we're both crying. I'm like, no, you are so right, Glock 9. <laughs> I have to admit, when I first pulled up and I saw you, I thought you were going to rob me. I know, I was being totally judgmental. I apologize. He was really cool about it too, thank God. He's like, girl, please, I was hungry. You gave me something to eat. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. And now you're going to give me that purse right there. a seizure <laughs> but there's a lesson to be learned in every situation never fall in love on the first date <laughs> especially if he wearing house shoes in the outside the house 